This megastructure will transform Earth into a trap for humans. Since the beginning of time, humans have been interested in space exploration and have always had a desire to visit there. Despite the fact that space stations and rockets can travel outside the Earth's atmosphere. However, in this case, we're talking about enormous structures that can carry an entire colony of people beyond our tiny planet and into space. The most expensive and most significant development in human history would be a megastructure. Most of the topics on this list will presumably be familiar to science fiction fans. But even if they aren't, there are still intriguing concepts that may or may not come true in the future. But just as everything has a drawback, so do these gigantic structures. So let's get started on this voyage because this megastructure will change Earth into a trap for humans. Global Cassis Building the antipod of the Earth using nothing but the planet itself is building material. On the interior of this enormous structure, humanity would reside. No heavens for the gods, perhaps paradise for humans. Swiss architect and artist Christian Waldwagel suggested this tower in a design book in 2004. With two light settling apertures, this form is a compressed geodesic icosahedron. It would take all of Earth's material and transform it inside out into a massive shell, including habitable living space into the interior, measuring 85,000 kilometers in diameter. One day, the populace will decide the future of their planet for themselves. Building materials will be extracted from the Earth. This has taken a way to build Global Cassis, a brand new, much expanded habitat that was conceptualized from start. At a fixed altitude above the Earth, four satellites orbit. These satellites are moving away from and towards the Earth. Thus, four towers are built. To carry people and construction materials out, these skyscrapers feature lifts with them. The lift stops are where nodes are built. During the Earth's reconstruction, people reside at these nodes. The nodes are connected by connections. These intermediary parts make up the entire skeleton that spans the Earth. From deep inside the Earth, magma is pumped up to the nodes where it is expanded. A very thin shell is squeezed out of the magma. Shells aren't produced everywhere. Instead, transculent inward curving window domes are. The shrinkage of the Earth increases with the amount of magma pumped out of it. The oceans and the atmosphere are no longer held tightly enough, and the Earth's mass is drastically diminished. As soon as they separate from the planet, the great rains start. The new greater Earth is being screeched by humanity at the same moment. To global casus, the atmosphere shifts. As a result of the topography that has been created, rivers, lakes, and seas form. People construct cities. Global casus grows a widely diversified vegetation after the heavy rains. People continue to create new cities. They begin a new way of life, settling down and making global casus their home. On global castles, there is enough space, a variety of climates and sceneries, and complete freedom of choice for homes and habitat. Every essential requirement is satisfied. The financial system and the economy are separate, so society is a continuous phenomenon. However, if our entire planet were to be transformed into something that enormous, everyone on Earth would have to be relocated to a temporary location, like the nodes stated earlier, which I don't believe is feasible, because we don't currently have one. We can travel to Mars, but that won't be feasible until at least 2040. And finally, accidents to happen during large-scale construction projects. Consider the possibility of a crane falling on a structure after an accident. Boom! We might even lose our one and only home in the universe. Dyson Sphere A Dyson Sphere is a hypothetical mega-engineering design in which platforms orbit a star in closed configuration. It offers its designers enormous surface area for habitation and the capacity to fully utilize the solar radiation coming from their central star, making it the ideal choice for both living space and energy generation. But why would someone create such an odd monstrosity? Freeman Dyson, a British-American theoretical physicist, suggested that an advanced alien society would think about the project after settling on some moons and planets in their immediate star vicinity in 1960. These extraterrestrials would start to use more and more energy as their population grew. Dyson's estimates predicted that the aliens' area and energy consumption would rise exponentially, reaching a trillion times larger in just 3,000 years. Assuming that their population and industry grew at a moderate 1% per year, the engineers of the species could attempt to devise a method to disassemble the planet and distribute its mass in a spherical shell if their solar system were to contain a body the size of Jupiter. 
the material would be enough to create an enormous number of platforms in orbit that are 6 to 10 feet, 2 to 3 meters thick, allowing the aliens to dwell on their star-facing surface by placing structures at a distance twice that of Earth to the Sun. A shell of this thickness could be made comfortably habitable and could contain all the machinery required for exploiting the solar radiation falling onto it from the inside, Dyson wrote. But Dyson pointed out that the structure would eventually need to emit the energy back into the atmosphere after absorbing and using it, else it would accumulate and eventually cause the sphere to melt. This implies that a star enclosed in a Dyson sphere may look dimmed or even completely darkened to a distant observer, depending on how dense the circling platforms were, while burning the unusually bright and infrared wavelengths that are invisible to the human eye. According to a NASA article, Dyson spheres are thought to represent a particular kind of technosignature, an indication of activity that far-off astronomers could use to infer the existence of intelligent entities in the universe. A few Earth-based researchers have combed through infrared scans of the night sky in search of Dyson spheres, but so far, nothing unusual has been discovered. It is unclear whether such fantastical constructions actually exist outside of human minds. Dyson did not predict that all technological societies would implement this absurd endeavor when he made his predictions. Instead, he reasoned that some might have and that it would be advantageous for humans, astronomers, to look for these enormous instances of intelligent minds. Ringworld Large ring-shaped planets orbiting far-off stars have come to symbolize science fiction. Our imaginations have been piqued by their immaculate terrain, which is housed within a narrow ring-like construction. A frequent theme and potential home for humanity in the future is the Ringworld. Larry Naven chose to base his book in Ringworld on the equatorial ring of the Dyson Sphere 10 years after the publication of Dyson's study on such structures in a 1960 issue of the magazine Science. Since then, Ringworlds have appeared in a lot of video games and films. They are enormous artificial worlds like those in Halo, where people can dwell on the broad landmasses on the inside of the ring while a solid shell guards at the outside. In contrast, the ring world in Neil Blomkamp's Elysium orbiting the Earth and resembles a space station more. But how likely is it that these rings will ever be created in the actual world? Size matters and everything, as it should. Mega structures like ring worlds would need an enormous amount of resources and energy to construct. That material is nevertheless accessible in some places. An area of the solar system known as the Kuiper Belt stretches out for roughly 1.86 billion miles. 2.97 billion kilometers beyond Neptune's orbit. It is cramped full of objects that resemble asteroids, which are regarded as the best sources of raw materials. There would be enough raw materials from which to construct a ring world, if, and this is a huge if, a future society has the time and means to gather and transport material from the Kuiper belt to the required orbit. But this raises the question of whether the significant time and money investment necessary can support such a venture. In order to keep its atmosphere and population alive, a ring world would also need to maintain some type of gravity. If not, everything would just drift off into deep space. By producing centrifugal force through spinning, artificial gravity is most frequently produced. The task of getting such a large item to spin at the requisite speed would be enormous. To prevent the structure from tearing apart, care would need to be made to distribute the rotational forces equally. Fortunately, there won't be much to slow it down once it starts spinning at the right speed, because space is a frictionless environment. The sheer forces that the rotating structure will apply to the ring world will increase with its diameter. According to Mac, how near you are to the star and how much gravity you need. Determine the strength of these sheer forces operating onto a ring world. However, considering the scale of ring worlds and the amount of power needed, this would be yet another enormous project and would be wildly inefficient. In addition, utilizing such a technology entails the risk of a catastrophic power outage, as well as the requirement to ensure an even distribution of power throughout the entire construction. Maintaining orbital stability around the star is the final challenge facing Ringworlds. Reynolds recall how quickly following the release of Larry Niven's Ringworld, fans calculated that if the Ringworld was displaced slightly closer to the star, it would lose its equilibrium situation and would drift closer to the star and then blow up. Can we ever expect to see such things? The response is no, but just at this time. Everyone is aware of how far humanity has come in the past century, and that we now plan to travel to Mars. Even the first ever pictures of dark matter and black holes have been found, 
when a thought is born, it will undoubtedly be put into practice. And if not for this, I'm confident that we will build other more stable megastructures to house people in space.